There's one tiny detail that you need to know if you want to play the intro to 5150 by Van Halen correctly, and I've never seen any other video or tab mention it. Watch closely and maybe you'll see it. Did you catch it? It goes by fast and he only does it one time. Let's check it out again. It's a really subtle thing, but you gotta have it if you want it to sound just like the record. I'm gonna show you how to do it today. Kids, it's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Like a lot of other YouTubers, I tend to obsess over the Roth era Van Halen stuff. Those are the records I grew up with, listened to the most, and of course they have some absolutely insane, legendary guitar playing on. But let's be honest, the Van Hagar era has some absolutely incredible guitar work on it that is equally worthy of study. Like the intro riff to the song 5150, which is one of my favorite songs of all time. It's a really cool riff that can show you how to use inversions in your playing, and there's a subtle trick going on to it that makes it sound just right, but I never see anybody talk about it. And we're gonna show you guys how to do it today. As always, this video is brought to you guys by everybody who supports my channel over on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Sign up today even for just a buck a month, you're going to get access to a ton of bonus goodies like additional videos, downloadable tabs, backing tracks, and so much more. This week, everybody who supports my channel, even for just a buck a month, is going to get the tab that I made to go along with this riff, as well as a very special bonus video showing you guys how I'm dialing in this super juicy Van Hagar era tone. You're going to want to see that one. So don't delay, sign up today, patreon.com slash benellerguitars. Gear-wise, today I'll be playing this lovely EVH Bumblebee, which is a super fun guitar. Playing that into my Marshall 50 watt Plexi, I got a Carl Martin Plexi tone, and of course the Aux by Universal Audio. First things first, this song is tuned down to drop D flat. So it's tuned down a half step. And then the low string is tuned down a step lowlier to D flat. But if your guitar is just tuned down a half step without the drop on there, that's okay for the purposes of this intro because he actually doesn't use the bottom string at all until he gets a little bit later on in there. So don't worry about it if you're not dropping the D. Okay, so the riff itself follows a couple of really simple chords. It's based around D major. This sort of C-shaped E, this C-shaped D, and then going down to A, and then a set of changes that follows D, A, E, A, and then back to D. And uh, he plays around with some of the voicings of those. There's some suspensions and stuff that he uses as we'll uh, go along and talk about here. But the first thing that you gotta know about this is how he is doing this first chord shape. Now most of the lessons and tabs that I see have you playing it like this. It's basically going from a D major to like a D sus 2. That means we're replacing this F sharp note with this E note down here on the B string. And it seems like basically everybody that I see teaching this plays it like this with the three finger stack. But there's one problem with that. If you listen really closely on the original recording, you'll hear that right there. It's going from A to G sharp, just a half step down like that. Now here's the thing, that is coming from this C-shaped E chord, right? So that means in order to play that shape, your third finger has to be the one on the G-sharp note, right? Now if you've been playing this chord like this, like all the tabs have you do, your middle finger is going to be on the D string. And I don't know about you, but I'm not quick draw McGraw fast enough to change like that. I can't do that nearly in time. 
no way I can do that. This is the left hand trick that I've seen Eddie do. You can watch this on live videos. It's the way that he frets this first chord right here and you have to do it this way otherwise you'll never get that nice transition when you go to the E chord for the second chord right there. Put your third finger on the D string, put your fourth finger on the G string, but then your fourth finger is also going to be playing the B string whenever you're playing the straight up uh, one fret triad like that. Watch here and you'll see what's going to happen. I've got my first finger on the B string 5. I'm going to be using that note here in a second. But watch how the little finger kind of latches on and off like that. It's kind of messy by nature, but you have to do it this way in order to make this work. So you'll notice that at first here, I'm going to be fretting two strings with my little finger. And like I said, it really feels like I just have a fistful of strings right here. It's a really messy kind of technique, but you got to do it if you want that transition to happen. Okay, watch again as that little finger kind of latches on and off of that chord. That's the only way to get to that E shape right there with that two note descending thing. That's a really cool thing that I've seen Eddie use in other riffs and is playing too. Just kind of latching that little finger on and off. I had to practice just that transition a bunch of times. You'll notice too, whenever I'm doing that, I've got the neck in that mangle it and strangle it position that we've seen Eddie use so many times. Um, I'm doing that because it just makes it easier for me to get into this C-shaped E chord, you know? If I've got the thumb really low, like classical guitar style for that, that's a really hard shape to get into, especially because you got to be barring from the D string to the high E string with your first finger down here to make those suspensions happen. <laughs> That really puts a lot of strain on my wrist and fingers if I'm doing that with that low thumb kind of position right there. Now he only does that the very first time. That's the weird thing about this. I, I learned it that way and I figured out that he was doing that little third finger slide and the latching little finger. And then I noticed he only does it the very first time in the riff. Every other time, it's a more clean transition between those two chords. And there's a lot of variation and improvisation in here. I know somebody down there in the comments has already busted my chops for not playing it literally note for note, but you gotta think, man, this is Eddie. He played it different every single time. Watch the live videos. You'll hear slightly different articulations of how he's descending through those chords. Sometimes it's really clean like that. A lot of times on the record, you can hear where he accidentally snags the high E a little bit. Almost like he's playing double stops. Like Corey Wong style, you know? Even the first time he plays that lick, the G string is kind of missing. Again, use everything that I'm telling you here as a vague outline. Don't feel like you have to play it note for note exactly like this. But just keep in mind, if you want to sound like the record, you got to do that latching thing going on right there. We're essentially playing three strings with two, uh, two different fingers in order to make that happen. Now, a few other things you want to keep in mind here. Um, it sounds to me like on the record, it's all downstrokes. That's especially obvious whenever he's doing, you know, and kind of snagging those high strings. I think that would sound really different if they were upstrokes. But I have seen live of him using some upstrokes in there. Again, it's different every single night, every time that he played it, it was Eddie. So you'll see on some live videos, him using a more traditional kind of approach for some of those arpeggiations. But I think on the record, it's roughly all downstroke. And be okay with it being kind of messy. Don't worry about it if it's not exactly. It's okay if it's got a little extra in there. So don't sweat it if it's not super neat and tidy. Keep it loose, follow those chord changes as a basic guideline, and you should be good to go.
So there you go guys, the little detail that you gotta know if you wanna master this Van Hagar classic. And trust me, you do. It's such an awesome song. Every riff in here is great. The solos are awesome. God, the vocal harmonies in the chorus are so good. Such a good song. I really need to break down more Van Hagar stuff here on my channel. I realize that I have neglected a lot of it and there's a lot of amazing guitar playing on those records. Uh, so let me know in the comments section what Van Hagar tune you think needs a big ol' breakdown and I'd be happy to dig into some of that stuff on a future episode here on my channel. So let me know the Van Hagar classic that you want to see broken down next. Thank you guys as always for watching. Be sure to get the most out of this video by heading over to the Patreon page over at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. It's where you're going to get the tabs that I made to go along with this, as well as the bonus video showing you how I'm cooking up that juicy Van Hagar era tone. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for notifications every time I upload a new slice of fried gold, and drop me a comment if you like what you see. Well guys, it's been fun as always, but now I think it's time for me to go, honestly, probably put some new ropes on this thing. These strings are kind of dead. I recommend you guys get on out of here and go practice some guitar and worship at the altar of Eddie, as we all do. Let's click it. More picking.